uh, this is Bill Doyle on Vermont Issues, and I'm, I was such a special guest that I'm, I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. Um, my name is Pamela Root. I live in Montpelier. Um, I've lived here for 25 years, and I work with Bill Doyle a little bit, and uh, I had an interesting experience the past six months watching the drones flying around Montpelier. So we talked about it, and Bill gave me some good suggestions on who to call. I called the mayor, you know, uh, and this, these are the questions that Bill has about it so that I can introduce to you some information. Uh, so Pam, thanks for that introduction, and did you introduce yourself? I did. That's good. Now, let's, uh, how many drones have you seen in the past uh, six months? I've drones? seen about 10 different drones. And do, do you find what a drone is? Uh, well, a drone is, um, if people don't know about it, it's a controlled flying vehicle. Sometimes it has a camera on it, and people on the ground can control it and maneuver it around. A lot of um, colleges use drones, as a, you know, and the tourist industry uses them to create um, inf you know, films that are, have information about the college campus or the city of Montpelier. But there are over a million hobby drones in the country, and those are just the ones that are registered. So it's probably double that. So there are these hobby drones owned by um, sometimes 10 and 12 year old children flying around all the all the United States without um, having to be really registered. Um, and that's what I've been seeing around Montpelier. I live in a house that's uh, wide open, so it's, a, it's like an enticement to any kind of um, drone that wants to check out somebody's, somebody's house. And um, I've seen at least 10 drones in the last five to six months. Are you aware of legislation in the rest of the country and other states having to do with drones? Well, um, actually, uh, I did find out that there was a case in Newton, Mass, where the city of Newton wanted to um, outlaw drones completely. They had an ordin ordinance against it. And there was somebody who challenged it, an individual citizen of Newton, and everybody, all the other municipalities around the country were waiting to see how that judge, uh, what, what he found, um, in fa well, he found in favor of the guy who challenged the city of Newton. So there are no uh, precedents for ordinances anywhere in the country right now. Um, I did call uh, Ann Watson, the mayor of Montpelier, and she called me back and we had a great conversation. She said that the FAA, uh, um, it's, it's illegal to fly within six miles of an airport, um, according to the FAA laws. So that puts Montpelier within that parameter of six miles. So any drone flying around in the city of Montpelier is already illegal from that perspective. But she doesn't think that the FAA is going to file you know, any suits against all these millions of drones flying around. You mentioned registration. Have you ever seen the registration sheets? What are they asking these? Well, uh, the, the registration, the way Ann Watson put it was, if there are a million registered, which is you just go and you fill out a piece of paper and there's, I don't even think there's a fee, um, then there's an, another million that aren't registered. Because Oftentimes, people are giving these to their children as Christmas presents or birthday presents, you know, a drone to kind of um, play with. So I think that's probably where a lot of um, the problems are coming from. But we haven't gotten to the real problems where, um, even though I've seen them flying, I live on the second floor apartment. And there was one time that a drone came within five to 10 feet of my windows. And I called the police immediately, um, which was the second phone call to the police. And I spoke to a policewoman, and I don't remember her name. She was very um, informative. She also said that the police were very concerned because these are 
they're, they're not obligated to be registered. Um, she said they're, one of their concerns is that these drones, and, and I have to qualify this, I've never seen one before 11, 11.30 at night. And um, I actually have a friend who saw one at 2 o'clock in the morning when she went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And so I, I don't have any reportings of them other than between 11.30 and 2.30 in the morning. So these, these drones are being flown at night and they're coming, they're looking in people's windows. I mean, um, see, that's very next disturbing. You put your shirt, the next day you put your shirt on? Well, who knows? They, they could see you on the toilet or they could see you take, coming out of the shower. Well, that's a privacy issue, isn't it? Well, it is a privacy issue, but uh, I guess the law states that the only time that you can destroy a drone is if you can grab it. Now, how are you going to do that on a second story? But um, yeah, the police are concerned about it as well. They said from a perspective, like, like a drone can go up to windows and, and flash a light, a camera light, and see if be people's beds are empty. So they could be casing a house for a robbery. You know, that's one major concern. Actually, I've spoken to three different, three different times to the police. Uh, the third time was a, she was giving tickets out on Barry Street, and we just happened to grab her to, to ask her some questions. And when we said, what do you know about the drones? She said, oh, do you live in the Liberty East, East State Street area? And yes, I live on East State Street. And the other person I know who saw it at 2 o'clock in the morning lives on Liberty Street. So she said, yes, we did know about one incident, and we, we figured out who it was, and we got that under control, we think. And what did you do? And I asked them, I said, well, how did you know where they were? Because these drones are operated, you know, I don't know exactly what the distance is, and I think there's different kinds of drones that you can get. Some can go further away from the source um, than others. And um, anyway, th she said she couldn't divulge that information yeah. to yeah. me. The policewoman said that. So um, I think that, that also I wanted to find out on a, on a federal level what was going on. So I um, got a hold of a C-SPAN discussion that actually Patrick Leahy had had, I think it was a year and a half ago, and he was talking about um, how important it is to try to come up with some regulations around these drones. And that, you know, there's this privacy issue, and that's certainly an issue, but there's also a safety issue, I would think. You know, there's some, um, even if somebody's not doing anything in their bedroom that they wouldn't want anybody to see, you know, who wants somebody to be looking in any of your windows at any time? And maybe they are casing your house out to see if they can, if anybody's home. Um, I don't know what else they could be used for. It seems that you're very clear that in your mind it's an invasion of private privacy drones. From my perspective, it's, it's, it's an invasion of privacy. I, um, I just feel like, what? I asked Ann Watson, I said, yeah, if you were sitting on your toilet and you saw a drone outside the window, how would you feel? And she said, well, I have all my curtains closed on the second floor. Well, why have windows then? If you're worried about some drone, you know, looking in your windows and watching you, then, you know, why, and, and, and that you always have to close all the shades and the curtains because you're worried about an invasion of privacy on the second floor of your house? That's absurd. So if, if um, could a drone come up to me and just snatch these notes out of my hand? Um, probably there's a way they could do it. If somebody had a high-level drone, I mean, okay, think of this. All the bombs that are being dropped in the Middle East are dropped from drones. You know, that's another concern. What happens if a terrorist gets a hold of a, of a drone uh, and sends it up in New York City or someplace? I mean, there's all sorts of things that could happen with them. And I don't, I guess it's, it's just, 
how did we get here? How did we get to the point where there's 10 and 12 and 13 year old kids and potential robbers and terrorists that are allowed to fly these things without any, um, uh, any, any kind of ordinance or anything against it? So what would you do to those people who do that? Have drones. Well, first of all, I think that it's sad that the the Newton case uh, didn't turn out the way uh, the city of Newton wanted it to, um, because I guess that set a precedent. But I would I would push that envelope there. I would say this is a privacy issue, and I would also couple it with <coughs> the six mile radius. Um, established by the FAA that where no flying drones can can be legally flown, and I would say I would I would incorporate an ordinance and I'd push it. Maybe somebody in Montpelier is going to sue the city for their ordinance. <clears throat> I don't know, but we have to start someplace. I'm going to drones get together and say that the six reasons why the market is failing and and uh, and perhaps induce a selling wave. Well, one night I did see three drones at one time. And I called my neighbors who are like in their 90s and I said, quick, go out there, there's three drones up in the sky. Well, by the time they got there, you know, these things can move quickly. These things can, you know, be there in, in for five minutes and be gone in two minutes, in a second, practically. It's not like it, you know, you can catch them very easily. In, in your bare hands? Have you ever done, caught one in your bare hands? I've thought about a slingshot. <laughs> I've thought about what, you know, but, but legally you can't do anything unless you can actually physically grab it. Then you can dest legally destroy it. Mm -hmm. How many people are going to be in that spot, you know? So they, they uh, <clears throat> And approximately what time do they see you? Well, like I said earlier, I've never seen one before 11 o'clock at night. And, well, other than I have seen drones um, around the 4th of July when the fireworks are going off. Mm -hmm. There's often, you'll see, people should start looking out their windows more and up at the sky at night. But if you watch the fireworks, there are always like two or three drones pretty close to the fireworks. That's just, have you been having sleepless nights? Well, I did have one night, actually, that's an interesting question, where I woke up and there was a drone out there flying around, and I felt, you know, I not, my bathroom's on the other side of the house, but I, I did feel really unsettled is the word. I, I don't know how else. Disturbed. Um, I mean, how would you feel when they, there's, if there's a peeping Tom looking in your, your window? You know, you find somebody. That's very disturbing to think that someone's looking at you no matter what you're doing. Could I ask him to go to another place? You're, you're disturbing me. Um, I think the police might. Well, how would you find out who it was? You'd have to get go outside and try to figure out which location somebody is controlling it from. Because it's not like there's no connection between the drone other than a, you know, like it's an electronic connection. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how else to figure that out. Uh, if you see them for 10 or 15 minutes, say, sometimes they hang around and stay for half an hour, an hour? Um, they move. They move around. They they will. Um, I mean, obviously, they're going around Liberty Street. As uh, I mean, I know from a friend who's uh, at two o'clock in the morning, um, and she watched them go across the street to the house across the street and look in their windows too. So I, I mean, could it be a twelve-year-old? You know, up at night, yeah. Yes, it could. So, so there's no p pattern whether you could see them at night, two hours here, a uh, couple of hours over there? Well, they're easier to see at night I because see. they have running lights. They're um, subject to 
the, the laws of the sea. <coughs> so they have red and green lights on them, meaning, you know, so that other, other vehicles coming towards them will know which direction they're coming and going in. Have you ever thought maybe of photographing them? I have tried with my little camera, I mean my phone, and believe me, it doesn't work. I don't have the camera to, to capture it. Did you ever think of getting a camera that could capture what they do? Well, I think the police should have some way of, at first, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was the police. I thought that the police had, were, had some kind of surveillance going on with the city. But after talking to the police, I, I think they're just as concerned. They recommended that I call my representatives. And they you did. I, I did call Warren Kitzmiller as well. And I called Ann Watson. And, and I think everybody agrees that it's, um, you know, it's a concern. I, I've said recently, I've said, everybody's so upset about these parklets. Well, how do you feel about the drones? You know, like looking in your window at night. That should be the bigger concern. That should be something that, that everybody would be unsettled with. Well, it's, uh, it's certainly an amazing uh, experience and, and for you in particular, but I'm sure many other people. How would you feel, Bill, if you um, saw a drone outside your window? Uh, I would, um, <laughs> I, 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 I worry about um, what what could happen? I, I, I mean, I, can they can they uh, get together and form a, a an interest group and and put in legislation? Well, I you know I think that it's been discussed. I I guess it's like inhibits your freedom of information or so. What would I don't really know what law um, a drone operator. Would we, why we would have to protect them? What would be the law uh, that would prohibit a, an ordinance from being put in place? So that, you know, I mean, what, uh, freedom of what? I, I don't know. Well, you're free to uh, ask the Legislative Council to draft a bill for you. Have you thought of that? Well, I wanted to get more information, and I told Ann Watson that I would call her back with what I found and um, I actually need to delve further into the Newton, Massachusetts case because um, I think that would, it's, like I said, it set a precedent for other municipalities. And the finding was of the, of the Newton case? The finding was that the citizen who brought the suit against the city of Newton because they had an ordinance against flying drones um, won. He won. Um, Freedom of Information Act, I believe it was. So I, you know, there are drones out there that you can probably see during the day. Um, like if they're doing a tourist, <coughs> um, uh, they want information for the tourist industry, they'll come into Montpelier and they'll register with the FAA. They, you know, everybody knows that this is a professional drone photographer making a video. Um, but these other private drones, uh, I mean, pretty soon what? Everybody could have a drone, and it could be like a traffic jam up there. I, I don't mean to exaggerate, but it, it, it could be. People could be, that's another thing. What about bumping into trees and bouncing off and going through somebody's window at night? There's all sorts of things that could 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 happen with drones that well, could be dangerous. And that includes their, they can uh, put, put in legislate, put bills in the hopper and have Well, a, I have think a, it a, might, I might have to be on a federal level. Even, they might have to set some kind of criteria and establish it <clears> so that municipalities and the state level could, could do something. Because I, I just think it's, uh, I think there's, like I said earlier, there's a potential for a lot of nefarious um, actions to occur with a drone. Now you know legislators quite well, and uh, uh, could you conceive of going to the legislators and saying, I'm worried about this for these reasons, will you put a bill in for me? 
I'll, I'll write up a bill. As soon as I, let me do the research a little bit more on the Newton case. And, um, and also, I, I would like to work with Ann Watson, the mayor, on something. Um, well, you could ask, it could be put on the agenda of a, of a municipality, a, a city or a town. I think what I really have been trying to tell people to do is look up at the sky. That was the ending of a, uh, of a science fiction movie once. Look up at the sky. Um, I do think people just aren't looking up at the stars. Aren't, people that are have probably seen these drones. And, um, you know, there's something to be said for, well, if I don't see them and I'm asleep, what, what harm can they do? Um, I guess that could be an argument. Uh, have you asked uh, other municipalities to take a look at what some, you, 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 gather, you could gather some support? Because I know you've been in politics. I know how you can gather support. Well, I'm wondering about Burlington because, well, they're, part of Burlington is within six miles of the airport. But, um, and I'm also wondering if the FAA, if they have, uh, filed any suits against people. Like I, like I said, it's very difficult <coughs> to locate the operator of, of the, the drone. It's, it's not as easy as, you know, seeing a connection between the, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, the age of Wi-Fi and all these electronic things that are up, up there and uh, out there. Well, it's an uh, invasion of privacy. If you ask uh, um, whether you can put a bill in, or could, if, or did you ask any of your representatives to put it put in legislation? Well, I talked to Ann Watson, and I, like I said, I'm going to get back to her um, with some information. And, and she said, yes, it was probably something that she'd bring to the um, city council. And that she thought it was an important issue. I mean, everybody does. So anything, anything else you'd like to add um, to this discussion? Well, anything I should have asked you? I think you got everything. Let's see what was on um, our list. Um, yeah, I think we covered everything on the, on the list. And uh, if you do discover something, you, you, would you come back and give, give us a new story? Well, I hope. Um, that um, if anybody sees this, that they they look up in the sky more at night, and if they have seen drones, they should <coughs> call um, Ann Watson, the mayor, and also the police, and uh, and help the police because the police recommended that I contact my representatives because they said that they are disturbed by it. Well, they we have, make the laws. I, we have excellent representatives, and, and I'm sure that if you ask, they would uh, put something in writing. Yes, I'm willing to do that. I told, I told Anne that I would take a stab at that too, like some ordinance that I uh, language around what an <coughs> ordinance would look like. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know the ultimate answer to really locating who's who's operating these drones. Yeah, well, I'm very impressed with the work that you've done on this issue. It's a, it's a wonderful issue. Everyone, everyone I've spoken to has want, want to know the results of this interview. interview. And I, I, must, I must ask the press to come. It's going to be a great press story. Well, eventually, I think when we have a little more um, factual data to present, I think that I mean, that's what citizens do. They're supposed to be the people who suggest laws to their legislators and their representatives. So we'll do that. Well, I commend you for the effort you put in, and uh, thanks for a great inter interview. Thank you. Pam? Thanks, Bill. <laughs>